So this is, um, these next few slides will be sort of a general introduction to um, economic growth in Mexico um, and the Mexican economy and some different aspects of that. So here we have, um, this is GDP um, per capita from 1960 all the way, almost up to the present here. Um, and so we have, in the right here, Mexico. So we have a couple of developed nations, the US and France here, and then um, Mexico, Chile, and Korea here. So Mexico had um, pretty reasonable rates of growth um, through the 1960s and 70s. And then sort of in the early 80s here, there was a crisis, and then another crisis in 1994, 1995. And so Mexico has sort of been falling um, behind, especially countries like Korea, and noticeably hasn't really made any progress in catching up towards um, nations like the US and France. So this figure is um, essentially the same data, just represented differently. Here we have Mexico, and you can see that during the 60s and 70s, um, performed relatively well economically, but after this period, um, has sort of fallen behind at the end is sort of the last out of those out of those countries there. So here's um, a little bit more detailed look at Mexico. This top line here is GDP growth. Um, slightly lower, of course, is GDP growth per capita. There's a moderate population growth there. And you can see sort of a high growth period in here, and then um, which was fueled um, by government spending, <coughs> um, a lot of reliance on oil revenues. Um, in the early 1980s, there was a drop in oil prices and some other some other problems, which sort of precipitated the crisis there. Um, there was some recovery, and then in 1994, 1995, um, the peso crisis or the tequila crisis in Mexico, um, another crisis, and the economy is sort of still recovering from that. Um, now, moving from like a broader national income account, um, product account view to household surveys. Um, this is the National Survey of Income and Expenditures, and we've used it to calculate income growth here. So on the green line, um, income growth going up, and then again in the 94 95 crisis decreasing, um, and then just, just now sort of recovering. And um, inequality here at the red line sort of moving up and down um, and decreasing slightly as we get um, to the present day. Um, income distribution, uh, not major changes income distribution moving slightly to the right or slightly higher income, slightly um, bunched up a little more, so inequality is likely less. Um, poverty um, in about the last 20, 30 years or so has been decreasing. You can see this is the, um, this is the proportion of the population in poverty. Um, starting out 12, 13% um, and drops significantly. An interesting thing, during the, the crisis here, the poverty rate increased and kept increasing all the way up to 1998. Um, so, We've seen with some of these indicators, like um, that household level stuff, the impact of the crisis lasting a lot longer than you might see with just GDP. Um, but in subsequent years, the poverty rate declining and is now at fairly low rates. Uh, this is using a $2 a day standard, by the way. There are, there are other measures, but this is sort of um, to give you an idea. And now, sort of moving on to um, the spatial disaggregation of Mexico. So Mexico is officially categorized as a, a middle-income country. Um, of course, that hides a lot of disparities um, in, in regions of Mexico. There are, there are areas with very high income and areas with very low income. And you'll see in a little more detail in the next couple slides, but um, darker green here is higher GDP per capita for each of the municipalities or counties um, in Mexico. Notice that it's, it's generally higher here um, along the U.S. border, um, and also generally higher in cities. So here's Mexico City here, somewhat higher, Monterey, um, I think this is Acapulco. Um, so generally slightly higher income in urban areas. Moving on to a different measure. Um, this is, um, and the colors didn't show up quite as well as I wanted, but it's um, the Human Development Index by the United Nations. Uh, and you can see like along the US border, um, relatively high levels of human development, um, which is an indicator it takes into account GDP, um, life expectancy, and education. Um, you also see generally higher levels along the coast of the country and in major cities. Um, so here, for example, Mexico City is around here, um, and cities on the coast, and Cancun there, I um, which is in contrast to areas which are more predominantly poor and rural, um, which are usually found in, in mountainous areas. So this is the Sierra Madre Occidental here on the western coast of the country, um, Sierra Madre Oriental and the Sierra Madre del Sur. Um, these areas having much higher levels of poverty, um, also much more rural. 
And so um, not just in, in GDP, but in also in access to services, um, for example, like water, electricity, um, and also financial services. So we'll see in the next few slides that um, access to, to banks, commercial banks, is, is much more limited in these areas here than it is in these areas here, which is sort of a motivation for um, microfinance interventions. A little bit of a closer look here. Um, this is uh, the same figure, but zoomed in on central and southern Mexico. So um, just to point out a few areas, um, urban areas. So this is the Mexico City area here and sort of immediately around. Um, I think this is the city of Puebla, Acapulco, um, I believe Oaxaca and Veracruz. So those are all fairly large cities. I mean, Mexico is a, a fairly urbanized country. Um, but in those areas, um, access to services, um, financial deepening, um, income, all quite a bit higher. Contrasting that with the primarily rural uh, mountainous areas, especially here and here. So again, areas which are definitely ripe for um, microfinancing. So moving on from the, the spatial element, um, I'll be transitioning into Jorge's section of the talk here. Um, this is uh, sort of an introduction to uh, the financial deepening story in Mexico, um, access to banks and financial services. So I have, I'll have uh, a couple different measures here. Here's the, the most recent one, um, M2 over GDP, uh, which as you can see has been increasing um, recently, uh, dropped as you can see slightly during the crisis, um, but, but on the whole has been, has been moving up. Um, the last 20 years or so. Um, the second measure, however, is a little different. So getting a little more specific, this is credit offered by commercial banks. Um, and so the crisis is just starting to have an effect right about here. But if you know this set of um, like M2 or GDP, which generally <coughs> rebound fairly quickly, um, this is a little more more local level. And, and the credit offer continues to, to decrease all the way up into the 2000s and is only starting to decrease. So. Um, Lack of, um, of uh, willingness by commercial banks to lend, especially to um, low income clients, is sort of is sort of an issue in Mexico. And finally, um, at the household survey level, this is um, household uh, access to the financial sector, pretty broadly defined, um, which could, so could include like a credit union or like a, a tanda, which is an informal savings account. Sort of moving gradually up, but still 50% um, here at relatively low. Um, so why is this important? Well, here in this figure we can see, if you look at this red line here, and this red line here, the red represents income. And so the open circles here represent households that do have access to the financial sector using that measure that I just described. Um, and so the gap here is, is pretty huge. I mean, at times, two times greater or more income for households with access to the financial sector. And of course, there's a lot more going on. There's also differences in education, but it seems as though this might be an important factor. Um, the blue, filled in blue diamonds there represent household wealth for those households without access to the financial sector. Um, open blue diamonds, household wealth um, for households with financial, um, access to the financial sector. So again, uh, major differences there. Um, this map, um, focus first on, on this left hand one. Uh, if you look at the areas in green, those are like I said before, the municipalities or counties in Mexico where there are branches of commercial banks. Um, the areas in sort of the dark gray, black here are areas without access to commercial banks. So you can see there are pretty significant parts of the country where um, it's not just that it's hard to say get a loan from a commercial bank, but there are no commercial banks. Um, so there's definitely um, a, lot of, a lot of differences in regions here. This map is the same thing, but, um, but inverted. So the, the dark gray is the areas with banks. Green is areas without banks, um, and within the, the sort of green coloration, the darker it is, the um, higher the GDP per capita. So you notice you can sort of see um, generally higher levels here than um, down here in southern Mexico, where there are no bank branches, um, or here um, in mountainous areas. 